All right, Sean Zatel, FightHype.com, here with the head honcho over at Showtime Sports and, of course, Showtime Boxing, Steven Espinosa. Um, Steven, awesome fight coming up on Showtime that you guys landed. We didn't know if it was going to go to Fox. We didn't know if it was going to go to Showtime. But before getting to Canelo Plant, there was some news this morning around the Rolando Romero, uh, Gervonta fight, some controversy um, with Romero having women come out and whatnot. Uh, anything you want to say to uh, address that? I'm sure people are, you know, they want to. Sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure people are curious. I mean, obviously. Obviously, those are um, disturbing allegations, um, very concerning. Uh, you know, at, at this point, we're, we're still monitoring the situation, um, looking to find out all the facts. And until, um, you know, we feel like we have a firm grasp, we're not going to comment further, but it is something we're looking into very seriously. If we get to the fight night uh, in L.A., what chances do you give Romero of winning the fight? Look, um, it's like... Uh, you know, it's like any other dish. He's got a puncher's chance. Um, and uh, look, you, you, you catch Tank, you catch anybody the right way. Like, anybody is vulnerable. So, you know, people can say, you know, Roly is, you know, he's sort of uh, non traditional. He's sort of, you know, he's a little different in his style. It really doesn't matter. When you can punch that hard, you're always at risk. We saw Gervonta talk more at that presser, maybe than uh, any other presser we've seen him at. Do you think Tank pulled on Superman, or uh, oh. Roly pulled on Superman's cape a little bit there? No, or? absolutely. It's sort of, it's one of those things. It, it's sort of the uh, the oldest story known to man. It's, it's sort of like, two guys don't like each other, you know, how do you settle it? You know, all well, this is the way people have been settling disputes since <laughs> caveman days. So, look, it's it's more sophisticated than that. There's a lot of other reasons, but look, a lot of the reason that fight got made is because of the personal rivalry. And uh, on to Canelo Plan, of course. Um, another another personal rivalry, another very personal beef between the two of them. Right, although that, that happened uh, more recent, whereas Gervonta <laughs> and Roley, it's been a couple it's years. It's been now. a while. Right. Um, how were you able to, to pull that fight in? You know, you'd think that stiff competition from Fox would want that fight, but, but how'd that yeah. happen? Yeah, look, the, the reality, Canelo's the, the number one star in the sport, you know, consensus pound for pound. Um, so there wasn't anybody who wasn't interested. There's not a platform in boxing, seriously, that, that wasn't interested. And at the end of the day, um, you know, money's part of it, but there's there's also other parts of it, you know. And, you know, our pitch, our feeling is the number one star in the sport, you know, in, in arguably his most important fight, deserves to be on, on sort of the highest quality platform, you know, the highest quality presentation with the widest reach. And right now, that's us. And we thought that, you know, for a fight of this magnitude, we do it justice, mm -hmm. you know, with our announcers, our credibility, our 35 years in the sport, our production value, you know, at this point, you know, we felt we were the best home and, you know, the Canelo team and, uh, you know, agreed. Do you feel like this is a long-term thing that should he go on and fight a Charlo or Benavides, it'll be on Showtime pay-per-view or? Well, look, you know, he's real clear. He's in a, is a, in a great place. He wants to, you know, uh, you know, finish off these last fights, whether it's five or ten, whatever it is. It's all about legacy now. So he's retaining his flexibility. It's a one-fight deal. But I do think... All right, bro. Good to right, right. see you, man. It's a bad man right there. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. he's, you know, he's, you know, that's what Showbox is all about, is, is fighting finding guys like this guy. Um, so, uh, but in terms of uh, where were we on Canelo? Oh, so... Uh, One fight deal keeping his flexibility. Right. So, yeah, but I, I think the reality is, yeah, whether it's Benavidez or Charlo, I, I think... You know, my opinion, those are the most interesting fights. You know, those are the legacy fights. You know, you, know, you can always go to 175, but in terms of the fights that are going to capture people's imagination, like Benavides and Charlo, you know, I, I think that uh, those are the fights to do that certainly are pitched to him. And I think after, you know, re-experiencing us on this event, you know, we're optimistic that we can do more with him. Speaking in terms of, you know, his marketability, where he is as a star now, Last time he was on pay-per-view 2018, he was able to get just at the million pay-per-view mark. Do you think he'll be having even stronger numbers these days now that he's back on pay-per-view? Well, he's, he's a bigger star. He, he's sort of, look, he's a bigger star than when we had him. He's a bigger star than when he you know, was on pay-per-view three years ago. Um, and, you know, one thing that he's added at this point, he's very comfortable in English now, which is a, a big thing. You know, and just, you know, for the U.S. audience to be able to hear him and, and sort of connect with him on a different level, that really helps the marketability. And on the other side, you've got Plant, who's a really likable kid. He's been exposed a lot. 
um, English speaking, you know, familiar to the U.S. fans. I think you got the ingredients for a really strong promotion. Can he be? A, do you think he's not just the guy? If he wins, you know, okay, he has the belts, but could he be a pay-per-view star? Well, look, he's been real clear. Um, you know, you know, he thinks he's going to beat Canelo, then he's going to beat Charlo, and he's going to beat Benavidez and then be among the pound-for-pound pound conversation. Right? If you ask him, he'll tell you that, and he's very, very confident. So, and if he does those three fights, he definitely, he should be top five pound-for-pound pound in the sport. Um, he is absolutely confident that that's going to happen, and if you listen to him, you start to believe it. That Charlo name seems to come up before Benavidez. When you, does this, do you feel, Stephen, that it's more likely that's or, who's next for the winner than, and then a Benavidez fight? Or is um... You know, it's you know it, it's it's interesting. They they both David's a, a tough out. Not that Jamal isn't, but David. You know, there are very few people that are, are as active as he is. You know, size, length. He's a he was a difficult matchup. You know, and you know, so you might look at it and say, look, I'll take a Charlo coming up from 160. You know, and let's push off Benavides to the next one. Well, that. That kind of sounds aligned with what a lot of boxing trainers and fighters, that the consensus seems to be building. Benavides is the toughest fight for Canelo. Yeah, I, I really think stylistically, look, you, you never know until you get guys in the ring, but his activity level, he's got power, he's got great work where he's got a good chin. You know, I, I think he's, you know, between Tank and Boots and David Benavides, you know, those are three young guys who I think... Uh, you know, separate from any one fight, those are three guys who I think are going to be carrying the sport for the next, you know, five, six, ten years. Maybe. Well, I hope Canelo goes the course that we're talking about. That'd be, that'd be wonderful. Um, just lastly, Steven, because I don't want to keep you too long. Um, Benavidez, awesome fighter. We all love him, right? But he is... Uh, not from Mexico, and right. those the fans, the Mexican fans, they embrace you more if you're from Mexico. Mm -hmm. He's half Ecuadorian, mm -hmm. um, not a bad-looking kid, but not the regal face of a Canelo. You right. know, is mm -hmm. could he be a star? You know, a, 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 I, yeah. you know what? I think so. You know, and, and I would say David is um, a little bit of a late bloomer. You know, and I was looking at footage of him the other day. And just even what he looks like now versus what he looked like, I mean, it's almost like two, three years ago, he still looked like he was maturing. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, you look at him physically, he looks stronger, he looks more mature. You know, I, I think he is just coming into his own right now. And he's very likable, great personality, you know, great story. You know, very relatable. So I think he's got a lot of the ingredients to be a star as well. And, and so is the guy fighting tomorrow night, Dronin. So thanks, Stephen. Yeah, uh, thanks for your time. Okay, thanks.